Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the Wade scorecard model. Uh, so we're going to be going through looking at some of the uses of the Wade scorecard uh, as well as uh, walking through an example of how it can actually be applied. Uh, so the Wade scorecard uh, is used in a really wide range of contexts. Uh, Any time uh, that you really need to make a decision uh, where you have different criteria for making that decision, uh, but the criteria are not all equal. So some criteria are more important than others. Uh, so it can be used in, in a really wide range of uh, business decision making scenarios. Uh, but one of the ones that we're interested in, obviously, uh, is during a project business case. Uh, where you have a range of uh, different possible options uh, to address your underlying uh, problem or reason for running the project uh, and you want to uh, make a, a logical and well-reasoned decision uh, but you want to do so in a way that makes your reasoning quite clear uh, tries to be uh, as balanced uh, as possible uh, and also uh, make sure that you have it documented. So it's not just an internal reasoning process, uh, but you've externalized it, you've captured it in a business case uh, and therefore you can revisit it uh, if any of the information actually changes to reevaluate your decision. Uh, so there's a, a range of things that we need to do in order to apply the model. Uh, we actually create our own uh, weighed uh, uh, scorecard. Uh, but what the key thing that we have to do, as well as having our different options, uh, is have a clear uh, criteria for your selection. So you need to have a clear list of uh, requirements and a clear uh, uh, understanding of uh, which of those requirements are, are more important uh, versus others. Uh, just a few things before we go on and run through an example. Uh, remember that it may appear to be quantitative and mathematical and, and, and definitive, uh, but really it's a qualitative tool. Uh, so it helps us organize our thoughts. Uh, it helps uh, present a reason case for a decision uh, uh, to others. But how strong that decision is and how strong that recommendation is, is really dependent upon uh, the uh, weighting and the scoring that you actually have, uh, as well as the information you put into the model. Uh, so the, the kind of programming um, uh, saying of garbage in, garbage out applies here as well. If you put poor quality information and poor quality reasoning into the model, uh, then the output you're going to get from the model is going to be poor quality. So you need to have strong reasoning uh, and good strong information that you put in uh, in order to get a strong balanced decision coming out of the model. So the example that we're going to use, uh, we're going to take a project and, and develop a weight scorecard uh, for use in the business case. Uh, so the underlying problem that this project is addressing uh, is that COVID-19 means that most employees uh, for this particular company are working from home uh, and the IT provision desktop computers uh, that would typically be used on site. Now staff have taken them in varying degrees off site. Uh, have to be augmented with other means of, of allowing staff to access secure systems and secure data platforms from remote locations. Uh, and we see that staff have asked for uh, access from mobile devices as well. Uh, so there's a decision that needs to be made here about how staff are going to be allowed additional access uh, to secure systems and data. Uh, previously, the expectation would have been just to use them on site. Uh, so just to use your, your IT provision desktop computer uh, within the office uh, to access secure systems and you wouldn't be allowed to access them from your home. But because of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, now we have a problem here that that previous system is not working well because staff are now working remotely and working from home uh, and still need access to, to secure systems and secure data platforms. Uh, so that's the problem that we're addressing in this project. And the first thing we need to do uh, before we go on and, and create our, our weighed scorecard uh, is actually identify the stakeholders uh, and look at the requirements uh, that they have. Uh, so we can identify three major stakeholder groups. Uh, so we have the users that are the employees that are actually using or would be using the new system. 
Uh, we have the IT department that has to actually implement, train and run uh, the new system. Uh, and we have management who are going to pay for the system uh, as well as uh, uh, have the, the right checks and balances in terms of the governance of both the project but also of the ongoing operation once the deliverable is handed over uh, to the business as usual operations uh, people. Uh, so what we can do once we've identified our stakeholders uh, is actually take a look at uh, what uh, requirements they actually have for the project itself. Um, so we can see here, uh, we can identify for the sake of this example, let's say we identify uh, four, uh, sorry, six different requirements. Uh, and we have those requirements uh, listed out uh, uh, from, from uh, two from each of our stakeholders. So the users say that one of the requirements is uh, that the new system needs to be easy to use and, and have minimal training. Uh, and they also uh, would prefer to have uh, mobile access. Uh, the IT department uh, have a requirement that the new system minimize the risk of data loss and data, data leakage, uh, as well as since they're the ones who would be maintaining and administering the system, uh, that it be easy to manage and administer centrally. Uh, and then lastly, management have also added two requirements uh, that you try and control the cost of the project uh, since they're the ones that will be paying for the project they they don't want uncontrolled or excessive costs uh, and also they don't want to have a reoccurrence of this occurring within the next two years uh, so the project has to at minimum solve the problem uh, uh, largely for at least two years uh, before they want to potentially look at, at changing improving or, or authorizing additional resources so we can take these uh, and actually arrange them into a list of requirements and what we can also do is decide uh, how important each requirement actually is uh, and this is at the core of the Wade scorecard model uh, it's for when we have lots of different requirements lots of different criteria for selection uh, but not all of this criteria is uh, is is exactly the same uh, so we can assign different point values so let's say we're, we're working here from a 10 point system uh, and 10 being the most important and one being the least important. Uh, so we can rearrange our list of requirements into a list of descending importance. So the most important we've decided uh, is to minimize the risk of data leakage and data loss. So because we're dealing with secure data systems, secure data platforms, um, let's say this sensitive confidential data uh, maybe is critical for the organization to make sure that that data isn't accidentally shared or lost so we will give that 10 points preventing the problem reoccurring uh, for the next two years let's say that's nine points it being easy to use eight points easy to administer seven points controlling cost six points uh, and then lastly because it's not necessarily the most important thing for us uh, as a project so looking as a project sponsor and the project manager uh, mobile access being preferred is the uh, the least important of our different criteria for selection. So what we would do then is put this into a table. Uh, and we have uh, an example here of a, a, a basic weighed scorecard. Uh, so we have a column uh, with our requirements. Uh, we have a column with our weighting. Uh, and then we have our two different uh, options. So for the sake of this example, uh, you would traditionally also have a uh, do nothing option. But for the ease of, of understanding this, we're just going to have uh, bring your own device. Uh, so we're going to allow uh, people to use their own lab laptops, their own tablets, their own phones uh, and allow a, a remotely managed uh, solution. So Samsung Knox has a, a solution. You have Active Directory, uh, Google Apps, Google Workspaces. So you've got different uh, uh, solutions uh, that allow the uh, the users to use their own personal devices, uh, but to have uh, a separate segregated uh, access for, for data and, and email and so on. Uh, and the second option is to uh, issue company phones to everyone. Uh, and those phones are centrally managed and, and centrally administered by the IT department. Uh, so we've got two clear different options that we're considering in this wage scorecard. Uh, again, remember that if you're <clears throat> doing your own wage scorecards for a uh, project business case, uh, you'll want to 
have a do nothing option there as well. Uh, but what we can do is uh, simply here uh, apply uh, different scores. So this is a bit where the qualitative bit really comes in, uh, where uh, it looks very mathematical, but it is based on a qualitative judgment. Uh, so we've risked that uh, bring your own device because you're using personal devices um, is not particularly great to minimize data loss uh, and data leakage. So we've given it five. Uh, but if we're using company phones, we can't completely eliminate the risk of data leakage or data loss. Uh, but we can say it's is greatly reduced if we're using company issued phones. Uh, so we'll give that nine and so on. So uh, all of these for all of the requirements, we can score out of 10. The thing is, though, this doesn't give us a weighed understanding. So in order to make it a weighed understanding, uh, we simply take the score that we've given out of 10 and multiply it by the weighting. Uh, that means that the, uh, the the most important requirement, the minimizing the risk of data leakage and data loss, uh, is going to be scored much higher and in fact twice as important as the least important requirement, which is mobile access preferred. Uh, so we can see here that we simply take the score, we multiply it by the weighting for that requirement. So for bring your own uh, device where we scored that as five, because the weighting for that requirement is 10, we do five multiplied by 10 to get a score of 50. Uh, and we can do this for every individual item. So we look at it for company phones, uh, we scored that nine. Uh, since that particular requirement is weighed at 10 points, uh, we can uh, get a score there of 90. So nine multiplied by 10. Uh, and then for the next one, stop recurrence of the problem for the next two years. That's a weighting of nine. So 10 multiplied by nine is 90 again. Eight multiplied by nine is 72. Uh, so you take each score you've given, multiply it by the weighting. And then that gives you uh, a weighed score for each particular option and each particular requirement. And once you have your weighed scores, uh, you can simply go ahead uh, and add them up. Uh, so we have here, if we add up the bring your uh, device option and the company phones option, uh, the bring your own device totals to 330 uh, and the company phones uh, option totals to 338. Uh, so that allows us to see that if we have put in the correct information, made the right judgments, uh, and also made sure that we've weighed each of our requirements properly, uh, the preferred option uh, as demonstrated through the uh, the balanced, uh, sorry, the weighed scorecard uh, is that of a company phone uh, being used to solve the problem. So that would then be the preferred option that's being recommended. And the rest of the business case uh, would, uh, would proceed with a justification and an argument for uh, uh, running a project to issue uh, all employees with company phones.